what's going on everybody it is your boy Tim back with another video just out taking a walk around the little lake slash office park I like to come visit took myself a little uh, mental health day and got outside of the Denver area I'm down in Loveland for a couple days just uh, relaxing checked into a hotel room sometimes you got to give yourself a little like uh, staycation a little mental health recharge get out of the big city so anyway as I'm out walking around, as I always do, I wanted to turn the camera on, take y'all with me, do a video. And I wanted to talk today about like resetting our lives or starting over, okay? And I wanted to talk a little bit about like, you know, my reset that happened about seven years ago and answer a couple of the questions. I think two of the big questions people have about like resetting their life or starting over is like, how do I know if it's the right decision? And then, like, how do I get the courage to actually do it? So that's two things I wanted to talk about today. Um, first off, share a little bit of my story for anybody who hasn't heard it. And once again, folks, this is not to tell it saying that, like, I'm anybody special or anything like that. It's really telling the story to say, like, if I could do it, anybody could do it. If I could, if, if I could reset my life and start my life on a new path, anybody can do it. And I came on this path um, and, and, and on this life that I'm living now, probably about, like I said, seven years ago um, in 2015. And it was actually minimalism. It was actually like converting to minimalism and starting to live a more simple, minimalistic life that like really helped me to see that like, while the life I had was a good life, it wasn't what I wanted. You know what I mean? Um, it was kind of like, it was cool, but like it wasn't fulfilling. And when I kind of looked down the tunnel of, of like the direction my life was going, I didn't see any brighter light. You know what I mean? And I think that's how you kind of know it's time for you to maybe reset or start over. If you just look in the direction that your life is heading and like while it might be, you know, decent, if you don't see any brighter light, if there's, if there's nothing coming up in your life that you can see that like might, you know, bring you more joy or more happiness. And it just seems like more of the same that might be an indication that it's time to reset, time to start over. Because life should be like exciting. Life should be fulfilling. Like you should be excited for the future. If you're looking, <laughs> if you're looking at your future and you're just like, eh. <laughs> it might be time to like take a detour, you know, make a U-turn, restart, uh, uh, reset, excuse me, start over. And I know for me, once I discovered minimalism and I was just looking in the future, I was like, I just don't, you know, the job's not as fulfilling anymore. The city I'm living in, I really don't care about anymore. Um, I was just like, I was kind of still hanging on to a relationship that I had ruined. I had ruined it and she was kind enough to forgive me, but it was obviously over and I was still trying to hang on to it. And I was like, I just don't want this for me, you know, for the next five years. If, if, if I fast forward five years and this is all I see, like there's gotta be more than this. You know, and that's when I just really asked myself, well, like, what do you want your life to look like? And I think that's a very important part of the process. Resetting your life is figuring out where you want your life to go. If I'm looking in this direction um, and my life just seems bleh, what direction do I need to go in? You know, to, to get my life exciting and to start living the life I want to live. And for me, it was like a life of travel, you know? Um, Took me a while to kind of come to this decision, but I was like, I really want to travel. And it's different for everyone. You know, uh, travel doesn't excite everyone. Okay, but there's something out there. I think there's lots of different paths and options out there for each one of us that will excite us and make us want to live our life. The thing is, it might be in the exact opposite direction of where our life is going now. I, I, would, I would use the analogy, starting over in life sometimes is like, making a U-turn into oncoming traffic with very little uh, visibility. You can't really see what's going on. You know there's traffic coming and you gotta do a U-turn. I feel like that's what starting over life is like. But the good thing is you know when you make that U-turn, it's gonna be way more exciting than if you keep going on the road you're going on right now. You know, but it is scary. You know, but I do think there are a ton of different paths that we just kind of get an idea that this might work for me. And, you know, to answer the question, you know, how do I know if this is the right decision? I don't think you ever can fully know. I don't think you ever can fully know this is definitely the right decision. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, time travelers will never come for the future and be like, hey, 
you know, if you do, <laughs> if you follow that path you're thinking about following, it's definitely going to work out. Like you're never going to know it's the right decision. I know for me, I just knew the path I was on currently wasn't it. Okay. I just knew the path I was on at the time was not it. And I was like, I think switching it up, starting over, doing something different in my life. I think this travel thing might be it. And I think that's one of the secrets too, is you just have to be willing to work at it until you figure it out. But like, why wouldn't you? You know, this is your life here. Okay, this, this, this is our life we're dealing with. Okay, so why wouldn't you basically like devote all your time, all your resources, your whole life to figuring out what you want to do with your life? You know, I, I, I look at life as I, I use 80 years. It's a nice round number. Let's just say we all have 80 years on this planet, if we're lucky. I'm just like every, every month, every six months, every year, you know, I'm not devoting towards like either figuring out where I want my life to go or like heading in that direction. I'm kind of like wasting those years. You know, I'm wasting that time. I'm getting closer and closer to, to that 80 years or however long I have on this planet. And the thing is, you might be like, well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to do it this year. Just doesn't feel like the right time this year. I'll do it next year. What happens is life a lot of times is, you know, uh, things change and we may get caught up in responsibilities or as we saw in recent years, the world might change. And then next year might turn into five years from now before you have the opportunity to do it again. You know, so I think it's it's you're I, I think you're never going to know that like it's the right path and you're never going to know like it's the right time. You know, he's like, is it the right decision? Is this what I should do? Is it the right time to do it? Like you're never, it's never going to be the right time. Okay. There's always going to be something. There's always going to be an excuse. There's always going to be a reason not to. There's always going to be some fear. There's always going to be some doubt. There's always going to be like, well, if I do this, then this might happen. If I do it right now, then this might happen. That's never going to change. It will never be the perfect time. Okay. I know like for me, it just, I was, it, <laughs> it's, <laughs> It seemed like just the craziest decision. You know, it seemed like just the craziest decision. None of my friends got it. And then I had to make like so many sacrifices to make it work. Like I literally had to give up, like I'd already given up like 90% of my possessions, you know, had to give up even more, uh, subleased my apartment. So I didn't have an apartment, sold my car. I had bought a scooter, ended up selling the scooter eventually. Um, was leaving all the friends, the loved ones um, I had. Like I said, I was I was in the tail end of a relationship, but you know I still was in love with her. So like leaving all that behind, giving up like everything I had built up until that point in my life was crazy. It was scary. Did not feel like the right time, but there was just something inside of me that was just like, if we keep on this path we're on now, it ain't it. it it's, it's just going best case scenario. This is what was going through my head too. I was like, if I stay on the path I'm on now, best case scenario, my life will look exactly the same. Worst case scenario, something happens and my life gets worse. I'm back out here in these streets, kind of, I might end up like getting somebody pregnant or, you know, <laughs> you know, I just, I just, I was just like, nah, it's just not, you know, maybe I lose the job I had, you know, I end up losing the apartment anyway. You know, I was like, best case scenario is this life right now and it ain't exciting me. So why not like take a risk, you know, make these sacrifices, you know, take a risk on the, on the off chance that like this other path works out and good news is it worked out. And for a lot of people that I've talked with and I talk with a lot of people about this stuff for most of them, it worked out. I don't know why it seems crazy, but for most of them, it worked out. And for the people like it didn't like initially work out, it eventually worked out. The people who stayed the course, it eventually worked out. That's just how it is. But it is scary. And that brings us to like the next question. People are like, how do I get the courage to do it? Sounds good, Tim. I've identified, yeah, you might be right. It might be time for me to do that. This life that, that I'm living now just ain't what I want. I want something different. I kind of know what, 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 I, what, what I want different. But like, how do I get the courage to do it? And I've been thinking a lot about this. Um, and I think that courage comes in hindsight. You know how they say hindsight is 2020? Well, so is courage. Okay. Um, I think courage comes in hindsight. Okay. I think in the moment you're scared, you're nervous. You don't know if it's going to work out. Um, I know me, like I can remember 
the days leading up to when I was leaving to, you know, leaving it all behind, leaving Florida, going to uh, Yellowstone National Park. I remember that my stomach, it was literal, it wasn't butterflies in my stomach. It was, it was, it was bald eagles. Like it was, my stomach was like killing me. I was shook. I'm like, Tim, what are you doing? You know what I mean? But you know, you just do it. But here's the thing. At the moment, I was not feeling courageous. I was shook. I was scared. I wasn't like outwardly showing it. Cause I don't want my friends, <laughs> you know, as they're, as they're dropping me off at the Greyhound station, I don't want people being like, Hey, you don't have to go through with this. You know, you can, you can not do that. Now I, I was outwardly, I was acting very courageous, but inside I was like the most nervous I've ever been in my life. This is a total like pivot point in my life. Like if this doesn't work out, I was going to be in Montana, no place to stay, no car. No, I knew no one up there. Uh, actually Wyoming was where I was going to go to work. Um, I was working in the Wyoming section of Yellowstone National Park, but I was going to be in a part of the country. I didn't know anybody, didn't have anything. I was nervous. Now, fast forward seven years later, it sounds like when I tell the story that I was very courageous because I just did it. You just do it. Very courageous. But actually, no, nah, it, it, it wasn't. You know what I mean? And I say that to say it, it, the courage comes later after you do it and it works out or it doesn't and you stick with it when it finally works out then you're courageous when you're telling the story is courageous at the moment you're never going to get like this level of courage where you're just like okay let's do it now never going to get that like i said nobody's going to come from the future and tell you that it works out you're never going to get like this moment where you're just like all right I know this is the right decision. Uh, my courage a meter. I went down to Home Depot and I picked up two big jugs of courage. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's never gonna work like that. What it basically boils down to is just one day you gotta say, screw it, I'm doing it. One day you, got, you just gotta say, screw it, I'm doing it. And I say, just start taking steps to make yourself have to do it. Start sell, whatever it is, you know, for me, I was selling off stuff, you know, went up there to the property management company, subleased the apartment, sold the car, you know, bought the tickets. I just started doing things that like made me have to do it. Now you can start small, whatever it is you're trying to do. Maybe it's quitting your job, um, you know, put in your, put in whatever notice you want to put in, um, whatever it is you're trying to do. Start with like the baby steps, um, start doing things. Uh, and then just keep building on those until you put yourself in a position where you have to do it. And then you have to do it. And then when you do it, you know, it, it just, it starts to, you know, because the, the thing in the beginning is when you're not doing it, you're just always going to keep spinning your wheels, you know, and coming with excuses not to do it, reasons why it won't work. Once you start doing it, it actually alleviates some of that stress and tension and fear because you're doing it. You know, I don't have time to worry about whether this is going to work out or not. I'm like in the middle of like doing it and like my decisions each day are going to determine whether it works out. That's actually a way better place to be than waiting around to do it. Um, because until you start taking some action, you're not influencing the outcome at all. But once you start influencing the outcome, it gets easier. But it's just a matter of like putting yourself on that road and like making yourself do it never going to have the right amount of courage. It's never going to be the right time. Your friends and family members are never going to fully be on board. Okay. In most cases, if you're doing like a really just like hard reset or, or start over doing something drastic, most people are never going to get it. I'm a big believer that the more people don't understand my goals and dreams in life, the better, because that means it's more uniquely me. So uh, when, you, when, you, when you're out there telling people what you're about to do and they just totally just do not get it, you know, they look at you like you're crazy, I always take that as a good indication that I want to do it because I know that's, that's some total Timothy Ward stuff. You know, if you're trying to do a, a, a change your life up, switch your life up, and it's something that like everybody agrees with, that may not be you. That may not be you. That may just be, you know, a slightly different version of the path you're on right now, which is not making you happy. So sometimes to get happiness, we really gotta, hey. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> sometimes to get happiness in life, like we really gotta switch some stuff up. And if you're really trying to switch some stuff up and you're trying to do some really different stuff, it's not gonna feel right. It's not gonna feel good. Um, it, it's gonna hurt. Nobody's gonna understand it. Uh, and there's really nothing you can do about that other than actually doing it. That's the only way out of this whole dilemma. Cause like, 
if it's something that's really speaking to your soul, right? And it's something that just keeps reoccurring, which is another way you know it's something you should probably should be doing in life. It just, just keeps reoccurring and keeps coming up. And over and over again, you find yourself watching videos about it and TV programs about it. Um, that's something that you're probably meant to do and it's not gonna go away. The only way for me to scratch the travel bug, <laughs> the only, for me to scratch that travel bug in my life was to start traveling. The only way to scratch that travel bug was to start traveling. I, I couldn't watch enough Discovery Channel, okay? I couldn't watch enough Gabriel Traveler. Shout out to him. He was one of the people that really influenced me to hit the road. Um, he's like the OG traveling, in my opinion. But uh, I couldn't watch enough of his videos to scratch that itch. Like, I had to do it. The only way out of that situation of like, this life isn't fulfilling me, this might, is to go after the might. So that's my message, just like, you know, if you're feeling that desire, if you're feeling like something's missing from your life, if you're feeling like you need to switch something up, bring something new in your life, get something old out of your life, then like, just go for it. Just go for it. In hindsight, you'll seem very courageous. Right now, trust me, you will be the scaredest you've ever been, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So was everybody else. It will never feel like the right time. I'm a big believer in just setting a time. Not only just starting to put the steps in motion so you have to do it, but also set a time. I'm gonna do it January 1st, 2024. You know how long you need better than anyone else, but just set a time um, and, and try to make it a time that makes you have to start doing something. If you're like, I'm gonna do it in 2028, you know, that's, that's come on, that's just, that's just putting it off um, and trying to make yourself think you're doing something. But set a time that's gonna make you have to get started going after it and just get, then just get like stubborn with it and just go after it. Just do it. You know, just Nike up. Just do it and then once you do it, um, like I said, once you get on the path and get started, things get so much easier, it feels a lot better. Um, you now are actively affecting the outcome and you'll start to see that all these things you thought were gonna happen that like might mess it up for you or the things you thought were gonna go wrong aren't going wrong and you're reaping the benefits of living it. I know for me, as soon as I got to Yellowstone and just saw the situation and met all my new friends and finally got to, you know, a sign up, get signed up with a company I was gonna work for and I saw the scenery, all that fear just like went away. Like within a day, all the sacrifice and all the, all the fear and the anxiety and the worry, it was all totally worth it. Like it all just went away. And I was just like, this is what I was meant to be doing. Like this is, this is what my life should be. Like, this is where I, I should be. And that's like a beautiful feeling when you're like, I'm living life and I know I'm gonna have ups and downs like everybody else, but like, I'm on the path I should be on. I'm on the path that when I look to the future, it's bright. There's a very bright light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, I'm not even in a tunnel no more. I'm, <laughs> I'm, dri I'm driving down like a beautiful country road, enjoying my life. And I, I sincerely want that for each and every one of you. I want it for everybody on the planet because I love everyone on the planet. Don't be afraid to re, uh, reset. Don't be afraid to restart. Like it, it's your life. As far as we know, it's like the only one we get on this planet. Um, it's definitely the only one you got right now. You might as well live it to the fullest, enjoy it to the max. And you have the ability to do that. I'm Tim, thanks for watching. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comment box below. Also, if you, if you got a second, if you'd like to hit the like button on this video, I'd really appreciate that. And maybe share it with a friend who you think maybe could use a reset. Love y'all. Talk to y'all later.